So and today we're gonna make a coin toss simulator. So imagine if I say to you, flip 10 coins at a time and tell me how many times head comes and how many times tails comes. You're gonna flip, you're gonna think first and then you're gonna say, okay, let me just flip it. Some of you and not most of you. So when you flip it, you give me the result. Okay, then imagine I say, say flip a coin 100 times and then say I say 1000 times or even 1 million times. So all of you are just gonna black out. They're not gonna do it. And maybe one of you who wants to break a Guinness World Record will try and ultimately, I don't know, will die at the end of because that is physically not possible for a human to calculate. For, th for these kind of things, we use computers. So today we're gonna use C++ to make a coin simulator. So I'm, in gonna, I'm including my header file. And then I'm using namespace standard. And then the integer main. And then the return zero. Okay, so the thing what we need first is three variables. So what I call integer number, what then when I call integer heads, the next one I'll call integer tails. I need these three variables because the first one will be the one that will store the number like how many times you want that coin to be flipped. This will be the counts for heads and this will be the counts for tails. So I'm going to prompt the user how many times do you want to flip a, the coin. Okay, so I'm prompting the user and then I get the num inside of this. Okay, so the other thing is that we want to store this in some kind of data structure. And if you are watching my series from the beginning, we've discussed about arrays, right? What arrays are. We, are, we know that they're like a container to store uh, as much data as you want. Like for instance, you want 10 integers and one integer is 4 bytes. So this has now 10 integers stored into it and you could like and they're in contiguous memory locations and they're adjacent to each other and we could store them and then we could retrieve them in a sequence right by a sequence like it started from zero which is zero indexed and then it's one then it's two then it's three then it's four then it's five then it's six seven eight nine so it's from zero to nine if we're saying like that so that was uh, arrays, but what the uh, downfall for arrays is that it's just static. Now, now I can't just like variably change it in runtime, and mostly a lot of programs require you to change it variably and dynamically. For that, we have another data structure, and we'll introduce it by including our new header file called vectors. So hash include vector. And now we're gonna include that new data type. So how do we include it? So we call it by vector. And uh, one more thing is that you're supposed to have C++ 11 and C++ 98 will support vectors, but it won't have all of its functions ready. So if you don't have your C++ updated, so I recommend you to update it now because C++ 11 isn't that uh, up to date too because now the latest versions are C++ 20. So, so get your C++ updated to enjoy all of these new functions. So basically the first thing is vector. And then after that, we include the, uh, the type of it. So basically we are, this is the syntax to it. We include these two angle brackets inside. We're going to uh, include the data type. So if we have a number and we want to include, so basically it's going to have an int inside of this, then a space for the identifier. So call it anything you want. And for me, I'm just going to call this as total which will have all of the numbers to it. So now this is declared, but uh, this is like same thing as an array, but now it's dynamic. So what I put inside is the number. This is now the size of it. So this is how it's declared. It means a vector is declared, which is zero index. This is the same thing as an array. Imagine it's the same damn thing as an array, but the other, the thing is that it's just more dynamic and you could like add multiple things inside and change it with, uh, in between the code and it's much more flexible okay so like for instance if it's num is 
uh, suppose I gave num as over here they said input and I said num as something like four okay so it's gonna start from zero it's gonna be two it's gonna be three and then it's zero two and three so it's gonna be like that and if for instance if I say something like six it's gonna be you already know zero to five so that is much more imp better than arrays because in arrays we can't do that that's a restriction in arrays that we cannot dynamically uh, define its size in runtime so now we're done with this vector portion now what we want to calculate is so we want to go through the whole vector so we're going to use a for loop for int i is equal to zero i is less than now array has a func uh, function called total so i'm going to call it dot size function and this size function tells us the total size of it for instance if it was four over here it will give the size of four okay so it basically the size is from zero to three and and zero to three means four values so if it's 10 it's zero to nine and it's still 10 values so that's the size of the function and now we're going to include the inc increment so basically i plus plus that's the incrementation uh each time it's going to execute now it's going to search if the array total we'll say sub now sub we're including if the total sub one is equal to something like zero another thing we needed to mention before is that when we're saying how many times do you want to flip the coin we have to mention that uh, what does tail stand for and what does head stand for so I'll say zero as tails and then I'll say one as heads because zero or one okay so we're gonna use some kind of random function I'm giving a hint so a random function will be needed to generate either a zero or either a one so heads as that and now we're gonna go inside so basically it's gonna put a number and now imagine that the size is allocated whatever you said I want to flip hundred times now the size of the vector is hundred over here hundred integers are stored in this vector total but the total is empty meaning there's no values to it meaning there's just zero 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 and you want to put some kind of value to it so for that we're gonna use that random function inside so if we say so it's looping through the whole vector and it's saying if total sub zero meaning the first sub and for that we say not but zero but we say sub i because we are looping through the whole loop so when we put inside if total sub i is equal to zero we say count of the number of tails so we just say tails plus plus and this means that tails will be incremented okay and if this is not the case then we know it's else if so else if total sub i meaning that same thing is one now if it's one what we'll do is heads okay and now you might be wondering that okay but where's the random number so the random number will be generated over here and we say like for instance total is equal to random number uh, we'll say total sub i because it's the i random and then we need the parentheses for this and then modulo and we say two so this means random number will be generated from one zero or one so it will either be zero or either will be one and the most important thing is to include the header file for the random function and that is C standard library okay now after that we got our plus plus our heads plus plus and this is gonna loop throughout the whole thing and then at the end I want to prompt so uh, we'll say total something total colon and we'll put the total so we'll just output the total uh, array size or dot size function and that would that would be might useful and okay and then after that we might have the now the heads and the tails so we say heads colon and we put heads count now We'll put an end line and then console output tails. 
and we put the tails. Okay, now save the code as code 4050. Okay, and now let's execute this code. So compile and run. Okay, now it's saying how many times do you want to flip the coin? Zero as head tails and one as heads. So how many times do I want to flip? I want to flip, let's say 20 times. Now it gives total 20. Heads will be 11 and tails will be nine. Okay, that was good. Now let's have something like a bigger number. So let me have what I was saying 100 times. So 48 heads and 52 tails. Now we know there's a fact that's called the law of large numbers. In probability and statistics, you know that when you have more outcomes, the law of large numbers tells us that the numbers will be appearing to be more and more closer to each other. So we'll say, we'll just mention the law of large numbers in our code according to the law of large numbers. And then we could have something like end line, save and execute, compile and run. And then we could say now we could have one million. So I have one zero zero three and one more. Now it's one million. So you could see total is that, heads is that much and tails is that much. Okay, so now let's modify our code to make it even better by making a record. So we're gonna ask the user if you wanna store it as in a record and it will up, it will be up to the user if he wants or not. So we'll include the file stream header file over here. So hash include file stream. And now over here, we're gonna say, uh, instead of all of this in the beginning, we're gonna say, do you, want to store the data in a separate text file or a file and basically it is a text file so uh I, this is what i'm asking so i'm gonna say op this is my character i have to define and i'm gonna say so basically i'm saying c in over here cons console in and then i say op so oh wait a minute semicolon okay so over here we're gonna uh, declare a character op and it's gonna be something like that so we'll say something like if option for op will be equal to small y okay the thing is do you want to create it in a separate file we'll have to have yes or no option so a boolean option so yes forward slash no and if it's yes, if he stands for Y, or we'll say we're using the pipe operator, or option is equal to capital Y, we'll say capital Y, and then we'll say, if this happens, right, we'll say we'll create a file, so basically a string file name, we're gonna make the user decide whatever you want, so uh, we'll say string file name, C in file name, and We'll console out for just to enter a file name. And inside we're gonna say uh, that file stream. So input, we're gonna do output because we're writing to the file. We're writing all the records to it. So output file stream. And we'll say o file as a convention. So you can name it whatever you want. And then I say o file dot open. And then I say the file name basically I'll say file name and dot I have C underscore string function to convert and then after this we're gonna we open our file in this code so if he wants to store in that we'll say if that option appears so inside of this we'll say if uh, the option was Y or it was or it was capital Y so if it was that we're gonna do 
what we're gonna do after this is that we're gonna write it to O file and we're gonna say if it was tails we're gonna say tails and then after that we're gonna have the number meaning total we're gonna write total whatever the number is either it's gonna be a zero or one total sub zero so total sub I and then uh, probably we're gonna have a space to it okay and if it's the other case around we're gonna just copy this code and go in the heads case if it's other case around we're gonna paste it instead of tails we're gonna have it heads so heads and that's that's it that's all uh, we need to do so now we're gonna have to just close it over here so right after this code we're gonna close it so we'll say o file dot close c l o s e close um, now we're gonna save it and we're gonna execute this one more time okay so the compiler gave me the error that the o file was not declared in the scope so the, where we'll look at o file where it is it was declared over here o file output file stream o file and we're gonna put it up a little bit so control x and we're gonna do it way before this so maybe right here we're gonna declare it and this has nothing to do of creating a new file when we do open then it's gonna create the file so this is not gonna harm our memory so now what we're gonna do basically is save this and one more thing I wanted to do is a C standard once we have a C standard library random function it is necessary to have a C time because you want random functions to repeat in random wise every time you execute the code uh, and obviously that is a, a thing you need so C time and then we want S random and then we have time and then we have null so that's what we needed and now we're ready to go so execute compile and run okay now do you want to store the data in a separate file yes or no so I'll do yes in this case enter file name I'll call it something like uh, record and you can make it any text file you want I'll say txt how many times do you want to flip the coin I'll say I want to flip it 20 times so it gave me total as 20 heads as 10 and tails as 10 well that was a nice combo so now if I go back and see where my code was stored you could see that there was a file called record if I open this you could see that heads one one so you could count count two heads over here three heads over here so that means that there are ten heads you can see how many heads over here there are five over here and then there's two over here and one over here and two over here so ten heads over here and ten tails over here Wow, that was impressive and suppose we want do the same thing now but with different values so if i go over here again and execute compile and run and now yes i want to store in a separate file i want the name as a uh, record one dot txt and i'll say probably 1000 is enough when now it has a random number heads as 498 and 502 because according to the law of large numbers so that is really close you can't see like heads as zero and tails as 1000 that is not possible according to the law of large numbers even if you have a not the trials increases the the ra the difference ratio the range will be reduced and it will be closer to each other so i hope that makes sense to you guys we'll look at record one and we'll see how much data is stored over here so all of that don't need to like go through it like look at that okay so that was it with this project hope you like this super nice project i'll have the link to the description of this on my github repository where you could just copy paste the code sample file for this and you can modify and make it even better so cheers see you around